All right, all right, everyone. Welcome back. Finally, welcome back to the blessed show. It's been so long, and there's so much that I want to say. But yeah, um, finally, restarting the podcast back. So, for people those who don't know, I have been doing this podcast for the past two years, and uh, um, you know, we did two seasons and somewhere around I think nineteen episodes. Uh, you can go and check back the previous episodes if you would like to uh, on all podcast streaming platforms. Anyway, so yeah, there's so much to say and um, I don't want to bore you with all the, you know, unnecessary introduction and everything. But this episode is going to be something that I have been wanting to do for a very long time. So I wanted to share my journey. I wanted to share how I started freelancing, like how did it all start? What's the... What's the you know beginning like, and how did it look like for me, especially for a lot of people in my country? I'm from India, and uh, you know a lot of people uh, would like to know about the process and would like to know about uh, how it all went. So I've been wanting to do this for a very long time, but finally happy to be sharing this as a you know as a podcast episode. So this episode is going to be all about how I started freelancing how I got into the process, how I am taking this ahead. So that's what it's going to be like. It's going to be a very chill, slow down, mellowed, uh, raw, uncut sort of episode. It's not going to be one of those, um, you know, <laughs> like perfectly produced without any um, ums and uhs just like this. But it's going to be a very raw and uncut format just so that, you know, it feels more natural. And I want to make it as natural and as relatable so that it feels like, you know, I'm there talking to you and you're there listening to me. This is what the episode is going to be. So if you're really interested about knowing how I started freelancing and all that stuff, stay tuned. That's what we're going to talk about. Probably we'll also talk about a few, few of the other things here and there. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get started. Yeah. So how do I start? Um, first of all, I just want to share quickly about how this season of the podcast is going to be. So I'm focusing more on, you know, uh, freelancing and, uh, you know, mindset shifts and things like that. This podcast is not going to be about design or you know, how to design a logo, how to get the best ideas for logo design and things like that. No, uh, this podcast is solely for freelancers, for solo entrepreneurs, for people those who are into creativity and they want to turn this into a creative business, a full-time thing or whatever, you know, you would like to, maybe you also want to do it as a part-time thing or whatever that looks like for you. So yeah, that's how the transition for the second season, sorry, the third season is going to be for the Bless Show. And this time around, I'm doing two episodes per week, Tuesdays and Fridays. So two episodes per week, Tuesdays and Fridays. And uh, why I have kept Tuesdays and Fridays is because for Tuesday, I haven't yet figured out whether I should keep it on Tuesday or a Monday. Maybe I'll do it on Monday. So the, the one that will be on Monday will be a very short episode, probably like, you know, four to five minutes. And it's going to be more based on the mindset shift as creatives or um, people or artists, you know, as creative people or creative professionals. There are a lot of these mindset shifts that I've been learning for the past few weeks and few years. And uh, I I want to share all of that. So Mondays are going to be that. It's going to be more of the mindset things. But Fridays, we are focusing on like solely freelancing and business and all that stuff, right? So Monday episodes are going to be shorter, like under five minutes, but the Friday episodes are going to be a little more elaborate, probably under 30 minutes or so. So yeah, that's how the transition for the second season, what I keep saying second season, uh, transition for the third season is going to be for the podcast. All right, let's get started with the episode. Uh, how do I start? So... Uh, 
starting with my interest in design before that i just want to give a little bit of context uh, for people listening so that you know you can relate or you can understand where i'm coming from so i belong uh, to india the country india the beautiful country and uh, uh, originally i am from kerala i am a malayali and uh, but i have been born and brought up in the northern part of india uh, my dad's a missionary he's a pastor in a church so he came here before i was born i have been born and brought up in the state called chatisgarh just for a little bit of context this state is not as uh, developed or as advanced or as exposed to a lot of the things um, you might see in cities like you know delhi or mumbai or bangalore or like you know other metro cities but it's a still under development state and uh, you know you don't have much exposure to a lot of uh, talking about specifically about design things you don't have much of exposure about quality standard design even in your day to day activities even if you look at you know your supermarket or your grocery store or things like that or whatever that looks like you don't have exposure to a lot of those things and uh, even when you talk about education or design education there's literally no such thing as design education nobody knows here that you can do something called freelancing which is like you know working from home and living like making a living out of the things that you love doing so freelancing the the term here itself is so foreign to people and uh, you know it's it's not at all the general norm you won't see anyone doing it here so just wanted to give a quick little context before i start and jump into my journey of how i started it so that you can relate or maybe you can you know have an idea of where i'm coming from all right so starting with my interest in design uh my interest in de- in design i didn't really realize that i like designing or i like graphics or things like that up and until i was in probably maybe high school i i think so i started looking up design and you know design things or graphical things only when i was probably in like 10th standard right and that's when because that's when we got access to computers and uh maybe like 9th even 9th standard i might say yeah that's when we got access to computers and uh not specifically designed but more of like the technology side of it like you know softwares and learning how to install softwares or maybe like cracked softwares and all of those things right so that's how i got into the world of uh you know softwares or design or all of these uh, electronic things when i was in my 12th standard i started a little bit of interest into design and i found out there's something called photoshop which is what most of the people use to you know design things to come up with these stuff like business cards or flyers or posters and things like that so i started uh playing around with photoshop to, you know trying to do something or the other here and there i got into college by the way i <laughs> funny story i took um science that is biology in my 11th standard thinking that i would be a doctor <laughs> but um you know few months in i figured out like that was the worst decision that i made cuz it wasn't just for me it it wasn't for me um you know i probably when i look back right now i think like you know it wasn't i wasn't made for stuff like that <laughs> um so few months in i figured out that this is not going to work and somehow i managed to pass my 12th standard by god's grace but yeah then i was figuring out what to do after 12th standard right like what should i pursue that's when i decided that i'll go for a general uh, degree like you know bba which is bachelor's in business administration also because that was one of the easiest one available uh, you know in in the nearby colleges so i decided to pursue bba and when i started my college i started getting more interested into design and more specifically into logo design i was like what's happening behind these logos who's designing these right like 
what's behind the scenes of these things like there has to be someone who is designing this there has to be maybe if not someone there has to be a software and i started googling a little bit that's when i figured out the whole new universe of google like you know if there's something called this like you can literally find out things here that no one knows or maybe you know if you have no idea about it you can literally become a master in this just by the power of internet and uh, i started googling i started learning more about uh, logo design and i found out that there are logo designers there are people those who do design those who do logo design and things like that but i never got uh serious into it i was just doing something or the other i was designing some sort of business cards or posters or even flyers and things like that for friends families and that's just how my college life went off um on my last semester in my uh, you know bachelor's in business administration so there's something called campus placements so what happens is you know companies come to your campus and you get uh, you get interviewed and if you're selected you get placement for that companies so i got two campus placements uh i mean two for two companies i got selected but um in my last semester i failed in one subject now what happens for people those who know obviously know this that if you fail in any subject the campus placement that you got is now no more valid because you are meant to pass your college degree and to, to get your college degree in order to get the job so i lost those two campus placements because i failed in one subject in my last semester in college but i was i was an average student i ma- i used to you know pass all my classes i managed to get my schooling done i managed to get my five semesters of my college done without any issue but just in this last semester things just didn't work out and uh, you know i failed in one subject just for three marks by the way and i was like what's going on like you know this isn't how it should be cuz i was preparing myself to get into jobs and get into the 9 to 5 life probably this is how my you know next step in life is going to be and all of that stuff but just somehow now things are not making sense because now i have no idea what to do so i had to wait for 6 months i had to wait another 6 months for my next round of exams so i came back home uh, i was away from home by the way for the last 3 years i came back home and uh, um i was preparing obviously for my exams which is only after 6 months so i was like uh, what to do and i wasn't on my better mental state at that point because of obviously how things were but i started learning more about design and things like that and i was like why not do something productively at this point of time anyway i'm just waiting for my exams i can't do anything right so i'll do something so i figured out that probably you can start an instagram page and i found out that there are a lot of logo designers on instagram right so this is back in um 2017 and i found out that there are a lot of logo designers on instagram and they're doing full time logo designing and things like that so i started this page uh this the the page that i have right now which is called bless creatics i started that page and uh, you know i started posting all those random stuff that i was creating i had no idea what to do um by the way just a side note that the name bless creatics it's kind of a play with words so bless is obviously and uh, my name is blessin so bless is just just the short of my name and creatics the word creatics it's a made up word it's made up of two words together like creative graphics that's how creatics came in and i, I just found it cool back at that time and i was like let's go with it and then you know the both of the words rhymed kind not rhymed but probably like you know they they sounded good together so i used bless creatics and i've still I'm, i've been still using it and uh, you know i've grown up with that now and everybody is so well versed with that so yeah anyway getting back to the story so i started this instagram page and i started posting random stuff here and there and then i then i thought you know why not try my hands on logo design specifically 
because I was posting something or the other very randomly here and there. I was like, let me get into this thing, a logo design. You know, what's what's there to lose? I don't have to invest anything. So I started posting stuff and I started posting designs. I started posting logo designs and surprisingly, people started noticing it. Like my my account you know, was getting engagement and people were discovering my account and people were looking me up and, you know, sending me DMs like, hey, nice work and all that. I was like, wow, that's nice. So this is how it works, right? So I started taking it more seriously, started practicing more, started learning more about logo design because obviously I had literally no idea about any of these things, right? So started learning more about things that's how I figured out freelancing. Like there's something called freelancing that you can do, which is like a full-time thing for a lot of people. And I was like, wow, that is so cool. And if I get to do that, I would be so happy. I was like, you know, if just imagine doing logo design or like doing graphic design for full-time, but then my, you know, inferiority complex hits in and it's like, dude, you're not that capable enough to do that you're not skilled enough to do that moreover nobody in your surrounding does that like you know how are you going to cope up with things how are you going to know how to do things and all of those questions uh, started rising up and for a moment I thought obviously it can't happen but then I was like um you know there's nothing to lose. I, I don't have anything to lose. I have a little bit of time in my hand. Why not use it to maybe try it out? So I started posting more designs. I started like consistently posting like probably like, you know, once a day or like four times a week and things like that. And my start, accounts started getting more engagement. And uh, that's when I started something called Lettermark Exploration, which is uh, a set of six designs for a single letter, Right. I started doing that. And again, this was my original thing. Like uh, nobody was doing that at that point of time, like that hashtag lettermark exploration. I started that. I thought, you know, why not try it out? Because at that point I had somewhere around, I think 2000 followers or something, 2500 followers or something. And I thought, you know, why not use this? And I started that. And my first post that is, that was for the letter A, six, six type of designs for the letter A. You can go and check it right now on my account. It's already there. Um, that blew up. And uh, that, you know, sort of like, that was the most liked, the most commented, the most shared post uh, by, you know, people and on my account, right? And I was like, wow, that is so good. Like, I got so many followers and everything just just was so nice and it was so dreamy and things like that i started getting messages from people like dope designs bro how are you doing this and want to know more about it and all of that stuff i was like this is so cool and this is like i might say like you know four months in so i i still have two months for my exams right i started taking it more seriously and probably like i think five months in I got an inquiry from a client and I was like, what in the world? So I got this inquiry and this client told me that, you know, he's a music producer and he wants a logo for his next album. And I was like, yeah, let's do this. And at the same point of time, I was so excited. At the same point, I was so nervous. I was so scared. Like, how am I going to communicate? How are things going to work? Like, what if he doesn't like my work? What if you know, he finds out that I'm a beginner. What if he finds out that I'm a newbie? What if he finds out that, you know, I have no knowledge about freelancing or logo design whatsoever. And, but at the same point, I was excited. So I, I told him that let's do this. And, uh, you know, I, so he, he asked me like, what is the charge for logo design? I was like, I charge $50. <laughs> I know it sounds so, so weird, but I, I told him fifty dollars, and back at that, back at that time, I think fifty dollars was somewhere around um, three thousand or four thousand rupees in Indian rupees, and which was like a very new thing for me. I was like, dude, I'm getting paid to design something for someone. I'm not, you know, letting it go. So I took the project, and uh, you know, I took the project, and I did everything I could to to please him to you know make him like the designs and he liked it 
and uh, he sent the payment and he said he, he didn't send the payment he said fun fact i didn't know that there's something called paypal <laughs> there's something called you know a, a system where you accept international payments so you have to know i was so naive at that point to all of these things right i just knew that i have a bank account so i sent my bank account details to this guy he was from uh, the usa and he said like all right i'm uh, you know transferring the account to uh, the payment to your account and i was like all right so he transferred the payment to my account it's just 50 dollars right you have to remember this is just 50 dollars he transferred the uh, payment to my account and he told me like did you get it i was like no i didn't get it and the next day he was like did you get it i was like no i didn't get it and i think the third day or something i get a call from my bank and they they tell me uh, uh, can you please come to the bank because there's a payment that is in hold and we need you here to review the payment so that you can you know we can release the payment for you so they call me and just as i mentioned all of these things are very foreign to these people right people living here so they found out that, that i got an international payment so they were like you know they were questioning me like where is this payment from what is this payment for so they're like so you design something so they pay you how is like what's this and all of that i said this is how it is i tried to explain as much as i could they said all right then fine just fill out this form and your payment will be released probably within the next two or three days so i asked them do i have to do this every time so they're like yes you have to do <laughs> do this every time it is an international direct bank bank transfer which requires this process i was like i can't i can't come to the bank every time a client pays me so anyway i was excited i came back home and uh, i think uh, within two days the payment got credited to my account <laughs> do, do you want to know how much did i got finally in my account so the 50 dollars he sent me 50 dollars the bank charged somewhere around i think 15 dollars 15 15 dollars so i only got somewhere around 25 or 28 dollars something like that <laughs> i was like dude this is not happening this is not how it's going to work out cuz you know the 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 direct bank transfer charges are like ridiculously high in our country so anyway point is that was a funny story right so then i somehow figured out paypal and there's something called a bank transfer wire transfer all of that stuff i'm not going to bore you with all of that because i can keep blabbering <laughs> but point is uh i figured out all of these things and i figured out that how to do payments and that's when i told my parents like you know i want to pursue this full time and they were like oh, do you really think this is uh, a good choice because obviously it's it's natural that they would uh, question the process or question the whole thing because they don't have any experience to this right they they have not heard about this they have not heard that anyone doing freelancing or they don't have any relatives or any known ones who are doing this so um, they were a little hesitant obviously but then i started getting regular projects and then i was so fortunate enough i'm still fortunate enough i consider myself really blessed to have parents like uh, uh, you know my parents because they are so supportive with every step that i take regarding freelancing or regarding all of um, you know all of these solo entrepreneurship and things like that because for people in the western countries this might not be a big deal at all but for people those who are from countries like india and uh, you know the asian countries we know the culture is totally different here right so you have to understand that it's not as um you know it's it's not as free or as easy as it is for uh, you know freelancers in other countries so so talking about this you know i i want to touch a little bit on the societal aspect of freelancing and you know uh, what people think about it especially in countries like india or i've heard that it's the same in countries like indonesia and africa so for all the freelancers or creatives um especially in countries like india and africa or indonesia i feel you when we have that societal pressure you know when we have to face the society's pressure to do something that is more of mainstream when you do something when you pursue something that's more into the creative side of it that's more into the passion side of it i feel you when we have to face that pressure right and sometimes knowingly or unknowingly we do things 
to please people around us. We do things so that people can accept us. But if you strive to please people, you're only going to produce what pleases them, right? That is what's going to happen because you're trying to do things that is pleasing to others. So the output of this is only going to be something that pleases them. And as creative professionals, I can testify this thing that as creative professionals or as artists, there is nothing as disappointing as doing things just for the sake of approval, just for the sake of acceptance by people around us because we want that acceptance from people. Instead, let's strive to pursue our passion. Like we are passionate about something or the other. You know, it can be anything. It can be logo design. It can be illustration. It can be photography. It can be filmmaking. It can be any sort of field. But we as creative professionals, we as creatives, we are passionate about something or the other. And that's what keeps us going, right? Let's strive to pursue our passion. Because when you pursue your passion, you're producing what your passion is capable of. You're not producing anything to please people. You're not producing anything to get accepted by someone. But you're producing what your passion is capable of. And guess what? The thing that pleases the people around you, the same thing is going to piss them off tomorrow. Like the same thing that pleases them today is going to piss them off tomorrow. So all this while, the hard work that you have been doing just to please them just to please people around you, just to be accepted by them, is going to be of no use. So don't waste your time pleasing people. Don't waste your time doing things just for the sake of getting accepted by people because it is, it is absolutely the fastest way to burn yourself out as a creative. It is the fastest way to lose your potential as a creative. It is the fastest way to lose your worth as an artist. Don't focus on, you know, getting the outside acceptance, but look inside yourself and find out what you're really passionate about and let your passion drive your output. Let your passion decide what you want to do today or tomorrow. Don't let the outside voice get inside of you, but let your inside voice, the inside passion, what's inside you, let it get out and let it spread among your people. Let it spread, you know, around people. And let you be an example. Let your passion or let your, let your story be an example for people to understand and to, to, to do things that they love, to do things that they're passionate about, to do things that they really think is worth it and not the other way around. So when someone asks me today, you know, like, what is, what, what is it that we need to focus more on as freelancers? They have questions like, my account is not growing. My, you know, my follower numbers are not getting up and I'm losing followers or I'm not getting enough likes. I am not getting enough clients and all of these things. The most important thing as a freelancer is to focus on the process and not the result. Like I got carried away a lot of the times with numbers, especially with social media being the most important aspect of, you know, freelancing. I, I got like, there was a point in, in my freelancing career where I thought that, wow, my numbers are going up. My numbers are really going up. And I was, I was striving to get more numbers. I was striving to get more likes. I was striving and I was doing everything possible to get the more you know, amount of engagement possible to get that follower number up and all that stuff, you know, all that rush you get when you have great amount of followers, when you have so many uh, people following you and all of that, the, the rush you have, it is real. It is, it is, it is not something made up. It's real. Like you can get carried away. And when I look back right now, I find that I was the least creative when I was focusing on these things. Like I look at my projects, I look at my past work when I was focusing on numbers. I look at my projects back then when I created them. I look, them, look at them and I find out that they were the least creative. That was one of my um, least creative outputs ever. 
because my main focus was on numbers my main focus was on building numbers like building followers and growing my account and all of that things if you are a influencer if you are focusing on growing a community that's absolutely fine but as creative professionals and i'm focusing more on the designer side of it i'm focusing more on the artist side of it uh when we get carried away with these numbers that's when you know uh, the the whole creative dip starts coming in because our attention is now on something that doesn't matter that is not worth it and it you know it it just drains us out and it never produces anything good out of it i'm not sure <laughs> if if what i'm saying is making um you know sense or not because probably i'm just running around circles because i don't have any scripted idea of how i want to take it ahead but i just wanted to put these things out there you know these raw thoughts that i have in mind because i really want to share my heart out and a uh, podcast is you know these podcasts i have planned it in a way that i don't sit and write the scripts i don't do that um and i will not be doing that for this podcast season at all i'm going to just you know let things out um spontaneously because i feel like you get the real stuff out when you do that so yeah so this is kind of my freelancing journey that's how i started freelancing and i've been doing that so since 2017 there are a lot of things uh, in between that like you know the struggles you face as a freelancer the 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 um mental struggles the creative burnout phase the creative dip phase where you have literally nothing coming out of your creative process and all of that but these are all like elaborated topics and i can keep talking about them on and on but if you would like to know more about these things let me know you know share them uh with me and i will definitely be talking about these aspects individually so that we can focus more on the you know quality that we are providing for these specific topics all right then i think uh that's pretty much it for this episode i don't know how this episode is going to turn out cuz i have not been doing podcast for the past year or so which is uh, so crazy so i don't know how it's going to turn out let me know in the comments if you are watching on youtube uh let me know in the comments share your thoughts in the comments so that i can know whether or not this is helpful for you share your feedback share your opinions cuz i really really want your opinions and your feedbacks you know what's the format should be are you enjoying the format are you finding it engaging or should i change things up like whatever it is either you can share them in the comments or you can dm me on instagram i'm just a dm away so yeah let me know what you think about it if you're listening to this on um audio podcasts uh i would really really appreciate if you can share reviews on apple podcast or if you can share them on your instagram stories and uh, you know tag me so that i can know that you have shared so yeah i think that's pretty much it for this episode if you like the episode share them on your stories tag me so that i can know that uh it was helpful for you and anything if there's any suggestion feedback or anything just DM me on Instagram and uh let's catch up there. All right. I hope this was helpful for you and uh we'll meet on Monday. I'll be uh uploading the next episode on Monday. Uh by the way, do you have any any idea for names like I think I'm calling the Friday ones Freelance Fridays because that's what we're talking about, right? Freelance Friday. And do you have anything for Mondays? Uh let me know about it. So, yeah. Cool. That's it for this episode. Talk to you soon on the next one. Peace.